Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we're diving into the LG CIU 1 plus 2 fault procedure. The first flight crew member to notice cancels the master caution. The pilot flying should follow the Airbus golden rules of fly, navigate, and communicate. As with any ECAM procedure, the pilot monitoring announces the displayed failure and confirms the failure by inspecting the overhead panel and or the SD pages. Next, the crew consider if any OEBs are relevant, and if not, then the pilot flying calls for ECAM actions. As the auto thrust has failed, the thrust locked FMA is displayed on the PFD. At the same time, the ECAM presents the message, thrust levers move. A single chime is heard every five seconds, and the master caution light flashes repeatedly. These warnings will persist until the thrust levers are moved out of their current position. To clear the caution and regain manual thrust control, the flight crew must take the thrust levers out of the climb gate and manually adjust them to match the blue donuts that indicate the current thrust setting. Once the levers are correctly positioned, the chime and master caution will cease, and the system will stabilize in manual thrust. Okay, clear auto flight? Clear auto flight. With both LG CIUs inoperative, the GPWS will interpret the landing gear as being up, regardless of its actual position. This can result in unwanted GPWS alerts during the approach and landing phase. To prevent this, the flight crew should set the GPWS system push button to off, effectively inhibiting any incorrect terrain or configuration warnings that could otherwise be distracting. GPWS system push button off. The landing gear gravity extension message on the ECAM is non-monitored, meaning it does not generate any further alerts and is provided purely for crew awareness. This serves as a reminder that the normal landing gear extension method is unavailable and the gear must be extended using the gravity extension procedure if required. Clear landing gear. Clear landing gear. Status. Stop ECAM. At this point, both consider any normal checklists or incomplete flows, any potential system resets, or any additional procedures that are applicable. On the status page, the ECAM directs the flight crew to refer to the gravity gear extension procedure in the QRH. This is crucial, as the loss of both LGCIUs means that normal gear operation is no longer possible. Additionally, the status page confirms that the landing gear control is now unavailable, reinforcing the need to rely on gravity extension. A memo message, engine one and two approach idle only appears, highlighting an important operational consideration. When idle thrust is selected on the ground with the slats extended, the engines will only provide approach idle rather than reverse idle. This affects the aircraft's ability to decelerate using idle thrust alone, requiring increased reliance on manual thrust control, braking, and spoiler deployment. As a result of the dual LGCIU failure, several key systems become inoperative, including the thrust reversers for both engines, both autopilots, the auto thrust system, LGCIU 1 and 2, the ground proximity warning system, and the CAT 2 approach capability. Remove status. Remove status. ECAM actions complete. Since this ECAM warning is triggered by a landing gear system failure, it is inhibited during critical phases of flight to prevent unnecessary distractions. Specifically, it is suppressed from above 80 knots until 1,500 feet during takeoff, and from 800 feet until below 80 knots during landing. These correspond to flight phases 4, 5, 7, and 8 in the ECAM inhibition logic. With both LGCIUs failed in flight, the wing anti-ice system will function for only 30 seconds before automatically shutting off. This behavior is identical to its operation on the ground, where anti-ice is provided in short bursts rather than continuous heating. More importantly, no ECAM alert or oral warning will notify the flight crew that the system has stopped working. 
the wing anti-ice push button on light will remain illuminated even though the system is no longer heating the wings. On some aircraft variants, the loss of wing anti-ice will be indicated on the bleed system display page with a no anti-ice legend appearing. This provides an additional visual cue, but in other aircraft, there may be no clear indication of the failure. The landing gear indicator panel is solely powered by LG CIU-1, meaning that the three green gear lights on the overhead panel will not illuminate unless LG CIU-1 is electrically powered again. In the case of a dual LG CIU failure, the wheel system display page will no longer show any gear position indications. Interestingly, despite the status page indicating that both autopilots are inoperative, they should continue functioning if the LG CIUs fail while the FMA displays land mode. This is due to the fact that once land mode is engaged, the autopilots have already entered their final guidance phase and do not rely on LG CIU inputs for continued operation. However, if the LG CIUs fail before land mode is displayed, the autopilots will immediately disconnect. One critical operational consequence of extending the landing gear via gravity is that it cannot be retracted again. This results in a significant increase in drag, which leads to a fuel burn increase of approximately 2.8 times the normal rate. Crews must factor this into fuel planning, particularly if a diversion or extended approach is required. Additionally, the spoiler deployment logic on landing is affected. Normally, partial spoiler extension occurs when at least one of the main landing gear struts is compressed. However, with both LG CIUs inoperative, this function is lost. The spoilers will still extend normally once wheel speed exceeds 72 knots, ensuring adequate aerodynamic braking remains available. Our popular A320 tech quizzes are now part of an exclusive newsletter membership designed to provide you with even more value. As a member, you'll receive four brand new A320 tech quizzes every month, one each Monday, delivered straight to your inbox. You'll also receive exclusive deep dives into A320 systems, procedures, and techniques that go beyond this YouTube content. And you'll also gain access to bonus content and other surprises to keep your knowledge fresh and up to date. If you're interested, click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to sign up today. Thanks for tuning in, and let's take your A320 knowledge to the next level.